So coming back here together uh, for our last hour in this kind of community, temporary community for today. And um, I'd like to invite Bhante Viveka, who had joined us for the afternoon session because he's based in Canada. So it's 10 o'clock in the morning at his end um, to share a little bit with us, um, guiding us a little bit in a brief meditation and then sharing his reflection on spiritual friendship. And then let's see where the journey takes us afterwards. So Bhante, I'm very happy to have you with us and handing over to you. Thank you, Aya. So I'm so happy to be here. Um, it's such a, a moving session for me and to hear about Myanmar. I've been back from Myanmar for a month and I stayed there. I ordained in 2013 in Myanmar. So I have so much gratitude and um, have also met a lot of the people who shared Utara Sayale and Pia Dasi used to bring oatmeal for me in the mornings because the food in Myanmar was making me sick. <laughs> so I, I feel so connected with uh, this Sangha today. And this is what I wanna talk about is our connection and especially how we connect together in this mutual intention of spiritual practice, spiritual life. And perhaps I'd like to start with a short meditation because essentially spiritual friendship starts with listening. So it makes sense to start listening to ourselves and then we can listen together as well. And that's a beautiful place to, for our spiritual friendship to unfold, to grow. So you can close your eyes or keep them open. And just notice, just listen. Listen to your body. Listen to your mind to your heart, how do you feel at this moment? How is the body? Is it relaxed or tense? Just notice what's already here without interfering without wanting to change anything. So we're opening up to the reality of this moment. The truth that we can listen, we can hear or see through our six senses, the body and the mind. The body is always with us. It's been with us since we were born. How often 
Do we listen to it? The breath or the sensations? What can you know at this moment? How is your body or the experience of body, of sensations, heat, coolness, tensions, expansions, vibrations, always changing. This is the nature of reality. It's not a fabrication of our imagination. It is the truth that we can see, we can listen to, always available to us. If we only open up and take an interest. So keep noticing the body, the feelings, the mind states. How is your mind really getting interested? and growing an understanding of this changing nature of all phenomena. This impersonal nature of phenomena. Sensations are not arising according to our wishes rather according to the laws of nature, the laws of causality, the mind likewise, emotions and thoughts come and go. Like the waves in the ocean, non-stop. And we can listen to those waves, emotions and thoughts. Moving through us. And we can listen. And because we can listen, we can learn, we can understand its nature. And by understanding the changing nature the impersonal nature. We avoid unnecessary troubles, confusion, suffering. And there's more clarity, stability, metta, loving kindness, compassion, the Brahma Viharas become available to us.
when the obstacles of ignorance, which means not being able to listen and not understanding, when these melt away, then all the wholesome qualities can flourish naturally more easily. So notice the quality of your mind at this moment. Take time to appreciate the power of listening and the power in taking an interest and noticing these basic truth about phenomena, impermanence, things are changing, and anatta, it's all impersonal. We all share these same experiences of emotions and bodily experiences. So keeping this quality of mindfulness and learning interest, you can open your eyes or keep them closed as you wish. As I share a few more words on uh, Kalyanamita, this is the Pali word for good friendship. Kalyana is wholesome. Mita is friend or friendship. It's connected to metta, loving kindness. So friendship is listening with care and with wisdom, with understanding. I wanna share two experiences that I've had with friends. And one is a very skillful experience and the other one is a, an experience that was quite painful. The first experience, the uh, skillful experience, this was before I was a monk. So it's in Canada before I went to Myanmar. I was sitting down with a friend and she was listening to me and she wasn't interrupting and she was very careful, carefully listening. And also she never judged what was being said. She had an open heart, open ear. And this was Somehow, this was so different than a lot of my experiences with other people. And I reflected, why, was, why is this person such a great friend? And this is what came up. She's able to listen, to be present, and not judge, judge me. So I can feel totally safe. I can open my heart. I can be authentic. I don't have to put on a special 
act. And the other experience is the painful experience was also with another very good friend of mine, a childhood friend, and we were sitting together. I hadn't seen him for a long time. So I was really hoping to connect and to share my life with, with him. And while I was sharing, his attention was elsewhere. He was looking at beautiful women walking on the sidewalk. <laughs> and I remember how painful this was. As much as I can uh, empathize now, At that time, it was so painful because this is my good friend I haven't seen for such a long time, hoping to connect and not being able to connect because the, there's no listening quality. So friendship, spiritual friendship or any friendship starts with listening if we cannot listen to another, how can we understand them? How can we connect with, with them? And then if we cannot connect with them, how can we understand them? And if we can't understand them, how can we love them? How can we care for them and give support? And this is what we've been doing. What we're doing today is listening to our experience of Dhamma, our shared experience with these Buddhist teachings. And Myanmar, the people of Myanmar, how we've connected with these people and how we're connecting with the suffering they're going through now, the brutality of the, the government is very difficult. So this is deep listening. And because of this, there can be some understanding, some connection. And we might, and, and these qualities in us of compassion and care can arise and strengthen. So, I want to express gratitude for Aya and everybody who's organized this beautiful gathering. This is really the essence of Dhamma. The Sangha is one of the three jewels. Without the Sangha, we don't have Dhamma. And the Buddha would die because the Sangha is what keeps it alive. So by being here together, we're enlivening this Dhamma and we're supporting our friends in Myanmar, a land of Dhamma, and we're supporting ourselves. So this is spiritual friendship. And my 20 minutes are up. I would just like to thank everybody and um, let's continue feeding this spiritual friendship together. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante, for sharing about listening and uh, almost like the listening as a basis for establishing friendship and listening as a basis for understanding and um, perhaps this may also lead on to our um, last sharing with each other on that particular topic of what spiritual friendship might be or friendship in general and this kind of aspect of meta because meta actually translates as friend not only as loving kindness so it's really that quality of meta of 
developing friendship with oneself and developing friendship with each other. Where does it start? What is the kind of role of listening for spiritual friendship and what nourishes spiritual friendship? Thank you, dear Ajahn. I hope you can listen to me all. So happy to be with you and to um, share also mental states with you. Aja um, asked me if I, I could share about Dana and my experience in Myanmar and the sense of gratitude. And it was like, oh, that's sort of incredibly easy for me to <laughs> kind of open up. Um, I am incredibly grateful to one teacher in particular that I met um, in Myanmar during my time, time in Myanmar. I was looking for a different type of living, something different from just like whatever society tells us to do. And suddenly I find this teacher that gave a different type of instructions that I was not aware of. I was like, oh, this is kind of different. And he explained and he gave these instructions out of just generosity. And um, really the only thing he asked me to do was to be mindful <laughs> in return of he's willing to teach me. And when I, when I apply what he, he told me to do, it was so different from the other experiences I ever got in meditation. He gave me the opportunity to be free, even though defilements could come along after that, or in the middle of a defilement, And I had never had that opportunity before to know that I could be free, even though a defilement was happening. I think it, that's the best gift someone ever has given to me. So much freedom. You think about the Buddhist path and you think, oh my God, it's gonna take so long. And the teachers talk about eons and eons and oh my God, when this is gonna finish, <laughs> when this is gonna end, it's just so exhausting. And suddenly this teacher made me realize that it doesn't matter, it's just, in this right moment, you can be free if you apply the teachings in a skillful way. For me, it was just a moment in life where I realized, oh my goodness, life can be fun. Even if other five minutes come, I can still learn and I can still have fun. I don't really know how to pay him back for that that he told me. It's that such a priceless thing he offered to many. It was not really to me in particular, it was to many. The one that asked for his own teaching. So I guess my way to be grateful it's just to carry on and to keep trying. And when I heard about what is happening in Myanmar at the moment, I was heartbroken. I really want these people that have keeping the teachings alive to be as happy as possible. 
this teacher gave me his teachings and as well accommodation and food and people around Myanmar like just the culture is so giving it was so touching so a way to give back as I mentioned before is just to carry on and keep the good work going <laughs> keep on practicing and enjoying and applying what all these great teachers are telling us to do. But perhaps we can also share a little bit of our generosity with them. So they can also have all the needs be met, all their needs to be met. That includes, I don't know, maybe food, safety, accommodation, whatever people of Myanmar need at this moment. So I think Aja will put in the link in the chat box, a couple of links where we can um, cooperate. We can um, have this opportunity to give. And if you think about it, Every time you have the opportunity to give some something, it's also incredibly freeing. You are um, sort of like letting go something so other people can join and can enjoy as well. That is the the basic of the four noble truths, just to let go <laughs> whatever you are clinging to. So that's a very good way to start or letting go. So Aya Nokoma told me to be brief and to share five minutes and I have been sharing for seven. So <laughs> I'm going to stop here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, dear Sandra, for sharing this. And uh, what I take from this is very much like, you know, what is kind of the biggest gift we can give back, not only to our teachers in Burma, but also to the Buddha, to the Sangha, is kind of keep practicing, carry on, and making it available to Paul and others. So perhaps this is a good moment to come to the close and sharing the merits in that spirit, like whatever we have practiced in the last hour, the last half day or the whole day, or until this moment of life over the last few years, and really kind of collecting this energy, this kind of wholesomeness, or the wholesome moments mixed with perhaps unwholesome moments, but if there is freedom in unwholesome moments, perhaps this can also be a supportive condition for our practice, this moment of freedom. So let's just bring that all here and gathering kind of this energy and then spreading it out in the traditional way in all directions, above, below, around and everywhere and may be of support to the people foremost in Burma, our practice today, whatever dana you want to offer, and may it also be of benefit to all beings everywhere in whatever realms for their peace and awakening. And I'd like to invite Sailai Piyadasi and Sailai Uttara to finish off with the traditional sharing of blessings. First, we will hear Sailai Piyadasi in Shan language, a very traditional Shan language sharing of blessings. And then Sele Utra will finish off with us. And if you have to leave now, feel free to leave. Um, otherwise, just enjoy and join into spreading the energy. And on a practical level, the links in the chat box will be still there. If you don't want to be in a rush now, you can copy them later on. And they are also within the event announcement on the web page.
on Samita website, so you can always come back to it. So I'm doing the last mobile transfer, but it's because the sound is not good, it's too far. The last laptop mobile transfer to here, say that here, that's it. Kusumiti nae mihe minam hokas rataka Laisan parami ma laisan kampa Tanting tan loh nain jimpi jimsan jimsad jimkon Vinaya satawa nai satyawala Ananta satyawala tanting kento Hum hum jum jum sadhu anu modana Lai hap kusu pom li pom benken san sen sen Sat na eta no sadhu 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 Danam ya silam ya bhavanam ya hosoka Tan sin tan long yak to kon to kai pi hi mam lai kon hi mam lai satava hi mam lai yon fak fan vai nai ma ko jai ko ko kasota to da hi ti osisa amata ni bana ti ta in se kat ti kano. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Akasada Jamatam Devanara Mahivika Punyam Tamanumodipa Hiram Rakantu Sasanam Akasada Jamatam Devanara Mahivika Punyam tamanu moditva, chiram rakantu de sanam, akasata chumatam, devanaga mahidika, punyam tamanu moditva, chiram rakantu mam param, etavatacham hehi. Sambatam punya sampadam, sabe deva numodantu, saba sampati si via, eta batacham hehi, sambatam punya sampadam, sabe buta numodantu, saba sampati si via, eta batacham hehi. Sambatam punya sampadam, sabe satan modantu, saba sampati si diam. So with this, we have come to the end and uh, yeah, 
wishing you all well and uh, perhaps see you again somewhere on the path. And um, yeah, whoever wants to say hello, you can unmute yourself and then leave or stay around for a moment. So just feel whatever is appropriate for you. But this is now the official end of our Awakening the Heart for Myanmar Day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.